Hello, everyone. Welcome to the David Wong podcast and webinar. Today, I'm with my really special friend, Dr. Patrick Porter, PhD. He's a neuroscientist and he's the inventor of the incredible brain tap technology. So we're here to um, ask him how he came up with this idea and learn more about brain science. So welcome, Patrick. Thanks for having me, David. It's great to be here. Yeah. So first, tell us um, what your background is and uh, what made you um, create this awesome technology? Well, I've been in this field actually since I was a kid because my dad was a seminar leader. He led something called the Silva Method. And so I spent my childhood at least two weekends a month setting up seminars and watching my dad do presentations. So you can kind of say it's in my blood. And he did, he received help because he was a chronic alcoholic and he couldn't get rid of alcohol. And what we found out was it was his inability to de-stress without alcohol that was causing the trouble. So what we found out was once we would learn to relax through technology-driven meditation, which at the time we used uh, something called GSR, galvanic skin response, where we put our hand on a cradle and it would actually make a pulse noise and you could set it for the cycles per second. Like if you wanted in Silva, they always want to get you to 10 Hertz frequency. And that's when the brain, that's kind of the idol for the brain alpha is that 10 Hertz frequency. So that's where most people are trying to get when they meditate. So that's how it started. And then it kind of evolved over time. I, I love electronics. So my undergraduates in electronics and then, but I kept helping my dad do his thing, you know, doing the seminars and things of that nature. So I, I continued to help him. And I realized that in order to be more fulfilled really was helping people rather than just making electronics. Right. But I found a way to combine the two. And I went to work for a company called light and sound research. And we, we, we invented, basically it was like one of those accidents you hear about. We had a big device. It was a $10,000 system called the SILS sensory input learning system. And it was all done by hand. So if you can imagine, this was before microchips, before cell phones, before CDs, before downloads, all of those things. And, so we would be by hand hitting these little toggles, getting the lights to flash and doing their thing and different things. And uh, the owner of that company, Dr. Robertson, actually passed away when I first met them. And so they didn't know what to do with the technology. But luckily, I had it as, as you know, the universe works and God puts you in certain positions. I happened to I told him, I said, let's reverse engineer this. My thought was building a bigger a big clinical model. But while we were building it, they came out with the EEPROM chip. This is a programmable microchip. Mm -hmm. And uh, now they're so small, you'd need a magnifying glass to look at them. But back when I first started, they were about four inches. And then they went came down to about two inches. And uh, so they're, you know, look like a little caterpillar, if you will. And so we could program that in our back office. So we were building these out of our back office. And I had a stop smoking clinic at the time. So I got to test and we, we would see anywhere between 40 to 60 new uh, clients every week. So we had a good test market, you know, people coming through. And that's how we created what's called the MC Square. And then from there, we just kept going in 2014. And I actually started a franchise company in between there, sold that in 2002. And then in 2014, I, would, I just got tired of not doing much. I was out speaking and things, but I, I thought I want to build the ultimate brain entrainment device. And I had read about auricular therapy and also uh, iridology. So with the retinal flashing, there's, there's actually more mitochondria in the eye than there is in the brain. So we're using that. And we can get more into that deeply if we, if we need to. And then there's also lights in the ears. This, this sometimes blows people's mind. Why do we have light in the ears? Well, our skin actually is taking in all of our senses all the time. We just happen to have convenient ears and eyes and nose and mouth uh, for taste, smell and sight and hearing. But our skin actually is the biggest sensory based organ. So, so the lights actually, I was wondering, why are these red and light, red and blue lights or, or in the actual earphones? So that's what it's for. Yeah, so the blood in your ears actually slows down so that it takes anywhere between three to five minutes, depending upon how much uh, cartilage you have in the ears. So it's a perfect place to do some red light therapy and, and the blue light therapy. Those are, those are the natural colors. I mean, there's spectrums of light that we go through all through the day, but we, what we did is we wanted to mimic the light of sunrise and sunset. 
So these are, there's more light than this, of course, but these are the predominant light that actually resets the body. So we're going to, those are not, they look like they're solid when you're looking at them, but they're actually flashing every two sec, every two minutes, they're changing what they're doing. And in the change of that sequence and what's happening there, they're going right. through the different frequencies of what's called Dr. Nogier, right. who was an iridologist. So he would change those frequencies so they would flash at different pulses at different times. And every two minutes, it changes to reset the body's electrical system. So we have the lights. Now, light was like uh, when we were doing Silva, at first, it was just sound. And the thing to know about sound is that 20, our ears hear 25,000 pieces of information every second, but we only act on about 40 of them. So there's something called the reticular activating system. This is a part of our brain that basically looks at our environment and says, hey, is this a safe place for me? Is there any danger here? Is there a loud noise? Is there, you know, there's only two fears we have when we're first born, the fear of falling and the fear of noise. Other than that, we've created the rest psychologically. They're, they're, not, they're not inherent part of our system, mm -hmm. uh, part of our nervous system. So what happens is we're going to use that system to change the frequency response of our brain. So talking about neuroscience for a moment, our brain has little cilia or little hair-like follicles on it that are always evaluating our environment and saying, hey, where am I at? Is this a safe place? What's the frequency of this place? And it does that because we are drawn to certain things like water, for instance. Water has a 10 hertz frequency response. The mountains is 7.8. If we are on a spaceship coming toward Earth, the Earth has a resident frequency between 0 0.05 and 100. So what this means is that our brain is going to match that because our brain has an evoked potential of 0 0.5 and 100, which means if there's a proper stimulus, our brain will match that. So think of it like, uh, I used to say modems, but most people don't know that anymore. But think about it like getting online and connecting with YouTube, let's say. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you first connect, you might see that little wheel spinning. That's because it's trying to get the data rate so they can send the video. Right. Well, that's happening all the time with our brain and our environment. What's going on out here? It's always, and if we're stressed out, of course, we don't process our environment correctly. There's a mismatch in that environment. But if we're relaxed and calm and our brain is open to what's happening in the environment, we process it. So we're going to use that. Also, our hearing, 30% of our hearing comes through our eyes. So when people look at the eye lights, the flashing lights, that's called frequency following response. The, the eyes actually follow that. In today, most people know what a binaural beat is, but I'll, I'm going to explain it because we might have somebody on the call that doesn't. But a binaural beat, they, these have been around since the 1800s, so they're nothing. They're not new. What's mm -hmm. new about it is that we found out that you can move the brain using these two different signals. So if let's say I want to create 10 hertz frequency, since we're talking about alpha, I would present a 300 hertz frequency in one ear, a 310 in the other. The brain literally hears the difference of those two frequencies, not, not the 300, not the 310. And then the brain acts on that 10 hertz frequency. And then so it would alter its state to alpha. Now, if we didn't do anything but just presented that one frequency like you see on YouTube, yeah. the brain would just go away. So people who are listening to binaural beats on, online, they get a little bit of a buzz or with their brain. You know, they get connected a little bit. But after two or three listenings, it's not really doing anything. We have to move that frequency. And so we have an algorithm that talks about how much time we have. And we have to change that up because the brain is super intelligent. It's actually recording everything. So how often so, do you need to change that, uh, change it up so the brain will absorb it? Well, we change it up between two and five seconds. Okay. We're changing the, the rate and pulse of what's happening. Um, sometimes it's faster than that, but most of the time that's about the speed. So that we can, it follows a track like sleep. So what we know, what we know about the brain is if we can get it into these altered states like alpha and theta, which are the two powerful states during meditation, then we can create more acetylcholine, we can create more GABA. These are two different neurotransmitters that help us to think better, sleep better, perform better. And they also downregulate adrenaline and cortisol. So when somebody says, why would they need brain tap? Well, there's never been a time in history. <laughs> where we've had so much stress, so much right. cortisol release, so much adrenaline, and not knowing what to do about it. I mean, we have all this pinned up energy. It's like taking a wild animal, put them in a cage. That's what they did with people for two years. Mm -hmm. you know. And so our nervous system wants to get out, move and breathe and do all these things that, 
to keep healthy. And unfortunately, the, the brain didn't. So what we did with brain tap or what I did with the group with brain with uh, light and sound research is we said, how can we move the brain as if we're in these environments without going to those environments? Right. So it's basically we're mimicking nature. It's like a virtual right. creating a virtual reality with the headset. Yeah. Yes. We're creating a, you're creating a field. And what we know, too, is that as we lower the brain frequency, the energy frequency of the body increases. So like if you have the aura well or something like that, where you can measure energy, we have a device called the NeuroCheck and we can measure energy across the body in as little as five minutes. So we can show now back in the, back in the eighties, of course, we were all doing it because it just felt good and we didn't know what was happening. There was no neurofeedback. When I tell that to people, they go, you were doing neurofeedback before neurofeedback. We weren't doing neurofeedback. We call it <laughs> biofeedback. <laughs> so, so we were using that. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us exactly what happens when uh, somebody who is stressed out puts on the headset? Like what's happening in their brain to, to help them feel better? Right. Well, what's happening at first is their brain's operating at a high frequency of beta. Beta we need. It's not a bad frequency. It's just if that's the only one you're occupying, you create a lot of stress in your life. It creates a lot of cortisol and um, you know adrenaline, all the stress hormones. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to match that brain at about 18 hertz frequency or, or a little bit less, maybe depending upon the session. Every one of our sessions are different because you need that difference to create the neuroplasticity. Then their eyes are going to be closed. They're going to start to breathe. They're going to follow the instruction. Now we have sessions that have instruction and some that don't have instruction. So we have some like when we, uh, as we get your sessions online with the frequencies, those are just frequencies, but we might add some language to them later, but right now we're putting them in there as frequency. So people can just get into the brain frequency and get into that for their physiology. They can also experience those frequencies. So while they're doing that breathing, they're going to find that they're going to disassociate from their body. Right. So all the programs are in the brain tap app. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you can see we have over a thousand eight hundred sessions in the app and each one is some unique one. So as you go through the process, each one is going to take you through a different journey. Most of the journeys in the morning are going to take you through alpha and what they call SMR, sensory motor rhythm. These are ones that wake up the brain. Uh, what we know as we get older is that our brain atrophies in the brainwave of SMR, which is sensory motor rhythm, that has to do with balance and cognitive thinking. So we use that one in the morning. That's a 10 minute session. So when they're going through it, it's gonna imitate a cycle of sleep. It's gonna to continue to bring the brain in and out of the deeper states. So you'll, you'll feel like, hey, I'm really deep. You might not hear anything. You might feel like you fell asleep, but don't worry, you're gonna come back. Then you might hear some noises around the room. Then it takes you back down. It's gonna do that anywhere between seven to nine times depending upon, because it's going to imitate a cycle of sleep in as mm -hmm. short a time as 10, 20, or 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So in the afternoon, what we do is the same thing. You're going to put the headset on. Your eyes are going to be closed. You can also just use the app if you don't have the headset. We, we do have some res a lot of good results with that as well. But when your eyes are closed, the light, sound, and vibration is going to guide you through the process, a cycle of sleep. But in the afternoon, we need to train more of a theta brainwave uh, most adults are missing theta. This is the reboot brainwave. I, I call it deep cycle brainwave that, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you've ever been in front of the TV and you fall asleep watching a movie, but then you wake up and you go, no, I'm not tired anymore. That's because you dipped into theta. There's a, mm -hmm. That's a timeless place. And, you know, you get all this energy in your body very quickly in that level that when, as you slow down the brain waves, you actually increase your energy. Mm -hmm. So that one will bring you back out, wake you up full of energy. And we've done plenty of studies on that, which we can talk about in a little bit. And then uh, the third time that people do it is right before sleep. You can do this with or without the headset. You put the earbuds in and you put the headset on. It's going to guide you through the cycles, but each time it's going to take you deeper and deeper until it's just in, the, in Delta. It's good because we need that deep delta to open up the glial lymphomic system to open up the brain and detox. Mm -hmm. And so we need to really get the people into a deep state of sleep. To get so this can, this, this can entrain the brain for delta as well. Mm -hmm. Delta brain. And also, we also have trainings for gamma, okay. which is uh, we've had people experience the psilocybin trips without a psilocybin. Oh, yeah. So we, we have over 30 sessions of gamma that we we've tested with the military. Uh, we did a study with David Rosenthal out of uh, Dallas, Texas, 
And we had some people that didn't want to use the psilocybin. They were scared. Mm -hmm. So what we did was we showed them that we actually mapped them. We did some brain mapping with QEG and we figured out what their brain was doing. And mostly it was hanging out in gamma. And so we were activating that gamma frequency mm -hmm. and we we're trying to really get to a region of the brain right about here. Cause right underneath the skull, that's where people, when they're having a spiritual experience, they'll trigger that region of the brain. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's actually a device out there called the God helmet oh, yeah. that we did a lot of research on. And um, we were trying to get, I have two of those at the clinic and we were, so we were measuring, you know, what it was doing with the brain and we're, because it's frequency, we can probably get the brain to do it. So what we did was we mimicked that. And then people were having these psilocybin trips with no psilocybin. Wow. And that, wow. you know, that led us to the, the study that's going to be released. It's already released. We're just crunching all the numbers. We did three different uh, pharmaceutical uh, studies in Brazil that showed that brain tap will regulate the 54 different neurotransmitters, which is pretty exciting. Wow. So you basically got the whole spectrum of brain waves. You got the delta, theta, beta, alpha, and even gamma. So, yes. And the gamma is what, what the brain experiences or what the brain um, uses when it's having a spiritual experience or some kind of, um, you know, high, high sense experience. Is that what's happening? Yeah. Or if you're an athlete, you know, the high performance athletes, when people have these high performance moments, we now know they're triggering a great degree of gamma. My, my brother-in-law, who's one of the top surgeons in Scottsdale, I had him just imagine that he was doing a surgery mm -hmm. and he had over 40% gamma going on. Mm -hmm. Is it safe it to, great. is it safe to stay in a gamma state for a long period of time? Oh yeah. I mean, um, you can't really function every day in that, but I mean, you could do it. I mean, if you're a creative artist or you're a spiritual uh, person or you're a problem solver, uh, they seem to have more gamma than anybody else. I, I was uh, at an event this past weekend and uh, a person had about 35% gamma just sitting here. And I said, is your job have to do with problem solving? And he said, oh yeah, that's what I do all day long. I said, you're pretty good at it. Oh yeah, I'm pretty good. That's the brainwave that's going to do it. It's like super intuition, super consciousness, if you will. Mm -hmm. And the brain just, and they also now know gamma actually, uh, or at least at MIT, the studies are showing that it breaks down amyloid plaque. So it can help with Alzheimer's and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So would you say that as you like increase the spectrum of the frequencies your brain can experience, it, it gets larger and larger, like the, the, the uh, capacity oh, yeah. of the brain? You get more energy and more neuro neuroplasticity is a factor of uh, energy. So we can measure that with QEG. We can measure across the hippocampus and that how much energy or ATP production is going on. And the more energy you have in the brain, the better your memory works. So it's like clock speed on a computer. The, the more energy we have at the cellular level, the faster and better our thinking is. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're, what you, you just talked about, what was that? You, you just said the neuroplasticity. Can you tell us more about that? neuroplasticity is the factor of energy. So when somebody says they have neuroplasticity, like our dementia study we did, we, we took women 55, 65 years old, we measured their brain. They all had between zero and a hundred energy potential, but they were all below 10. Oh. So that, I mean, we took, we sent them to their doctor. They all took the cognitive testing. They all were in the dementia scoring. They basically had all the signs of somebody who, the next stop was Alzheimer's. There was there, and their doctors actually told them, "Go home, take care. You know, it's not going to be long, and people are going to have to be taking care of you." Blah blah blah. They mm -hmm. basically just gave them all bad news. Right. And I said, "Well, uh, Dr. Miller, Dr. Kelly Miller wrote the book Saving Your Brain. He writes about it in his book. And what we did was we put them only on brain tap. Now, if you do other things, it's even going to work better, you know. <laughs> but of course, when you're doing a study, you try to do you know one or two things or isolate what's going on. We had them listen three times a day." And during that three times a day, what we found out was that they could increase their energy in their brain. The average energy increased up to about 80% over, wow. the, over the six week training period. At the end of six weeks, they had 49% more energy in the brain than they did when they started, mm -hmm. which is neuroplasticity. And then we sent them back to their doctor. He took, they took the cognitive scores, they did everything, they did all the testing and their doctors, every one of them said, well, if you came in like this six weeks ago, I'd have never diagnosed you with dementia. Wow! But once you're diagnosed in America, it's like a death sentence. They don't oh, take yeah. it off, you know. And they're like, "Well, I don't have it now." 
oh, well, you know, but you did have it because the medical world doesn't believe people can actually overcome these kind of things. They right. think that we're on a finite trip to hell, you know, that our body's just going to keep deteriorating and we can't rebuild it. Yeah. You and I both know with energy medicine, like frequencies and light and sound that in proper nutrition and moving and breathing that we can reclaim this body. In fact, mm -hmm. there's no reason to think that this body need, even needs to age. You yeah. know, um, I know I kind of look like a 13 year old right now, but you know, there, there are, there are certain things the body does when, I mean, they, there's a, there's a story out there that in, in the literature that talks about Harvard, they had a chicken heart alive for 35 years. And all they had to do is give it light nutrients and make sure the toxins were cleared out. And they believed they could keep that heart alive forever. Wow. So if, if they, and that's not even attached to a chicken, that's just a heart. <laughs> so, I mean, when you think about the cells of our body, the, the reality is if we can keep our energy charged, we can keep the energy full in our cells, we can keep the toxins out and we can provide nutrients to the cells. There's no reason our cells can't stay alive forever. I mean, I'm not saying I'm not really... I mean, I'm not trying to do that. Like there are a group of people out there, I'm sure that are, I mean, I, I know that there's cycles to everything. I mean, even the greatest mm -hmm. people who ever walked the earth have died. So I'm mm -hmm. not, but I mean, we don't have, what, what, what I believe is that we can go into the, any age, have a great thinking, acting and responding. I mean, look at a lot of the, our Native Americans or even Chinese medicine doctors that, I mean, I know some that are 90, hundred years old and you'd think they were 60 or 50, you know, they're, they're just full of energy. They don't age to them is not the same. I, in fact, one of my favorite teachers, uh, Parahans Yogananda in his book, uh, autobiography of Yogi, when somebody asked him how old he was, he said, I'm, I'm zero. I'm infinite. <laughs> you want to know the age of my house, you know, <laughs> you know, the, the age of his house. That's what most people are talking about their house. You're not this body. We're energy. I'm a firm believer, and I've seen too much evidence out there to think otherwise. We are energy beings. And the more energy we can bring into the system, mm -hmm. then that's why I love your device along with BrainTap, because now you can work on the physiology of the body. At the same time, we're working on the mental side. And right. yeah, you can put that on any of the chakra systems. You have a whole pro protocol for it. Mm -hmm. I think people can be using BrainTap at the same time and maximizing those results and yeah. you know that's what that's what i've been doing here with my with mine and with my in harmony cushion that i use mm -hmm. so there's all these different things that we can do so you can you can add those in you can continue to get those frequencies every cell is responding to uh, whatever's going on in its environment and the key for the people out there is that we now know through something called epigenetics which means what is going on out there in the world? Like, what are we seeing, hearing, experiencing? What are we thinking? What are we eating? You know, who are we having conversations with? What books have we read? We now know all of that goes into our genetics. And our genetics, either we either show up as our best self because we have energy and vitality, or we show up as compromised because we don't have the energy to turn on. And how we turn that on now is through our electrical system mm -hmm. and through our biophotaic system. We have an energy system that's light sound and vibration. It's in every cell. And just to give an example, because people go, what do you mean? Some people, if they walk by a 5G tower, for instance, they actually get sick. They get EMF poisoning. Mm -hmm. That's because their body, there's the every cell goes into what's called the cell danger response. Just like we can kind of go into a ball and, or freeze if we really get stressed out or whatever. Every cell is doing that. So we need our cells to be open and processing information but there are frequencies out there that aren't healthy, right? Mm -hmm. So like 5G, 50 million yeah. pulses per second on our cells. And our cells, what's happening? Our cells are going, what is that? Because every time that it's going, knock, 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 knock. And it's yeah. going, I don't, I don't know that frequency. Mm -hmm. I've been around, you know, our bodies are used to, for the last 200,000 years, All we have a lot of frequencies we're exposed to. But when we start introducing non-healing frequencies, right? like, you know, Dr. Reif was really good at our... Uh, Admiral Rife. I don't know if he was a doctor. Royal, Royal Rife. Royal Rife. Yeah. yeah. He, all of his frequencies have been proven. The body responds to those. It actually invites those. It's almost like uh, they say when we walk in the woods, mm -hmm. it's like we're walking through a Rife generator because every tree, every blade of grass, everything we're doing, it actually has a resonant frequency and our body is matching those. Mm -hmm. So like 
in Japan or, or China, when they talk about forest bathing, basically they're just talking about walking through the woods and, right. and it's turning on those internal resources that we have. Right. But because we can't always get out to the woods anymore, and we're not living out in nature, we can imitate that with frequency. Right. And, you know, that's what we do with for the brain. And I know that's what you do with with mm. your your device. So we're kind of one two punch there. Right. Yeah. With Qi coils, um, we're we're replicating Qi, right? The, the natural life force of the planet and of everything uh, that's alive or everything in the universe. And interestingly, you're talking about going in the woods because uh, in Chinese, um, you know, lore or Chinese uh, understanding is that there's ley lines. On the planet, and probably in many actually other cultures, I uh, know this as well, is that some parts of the uh, Earth have a stronger life force than other other places, and that's where they built the, you know, the palaces and the temples and the churches and so on. Yeah, yeah we have those in our body too. So mm -hmm. I was just in Sedona. They have what they could. They have those energy centers there. Um, they say that the pyramids are built on one of the energy centers that, you know, there's a grid around our planet. It makes sense. I mean, we have meridians that can be measured now. I mean, acupuncturists have known this for 10,000 years or more. So we're just directing that energy. And the nice thing is that the medical world is now waking up to the fact that energy medicine is here to stay. Mm -hmm. I mean, the school that I teach at quantum university, they have a lot of different people doing uh, energy medicine. So, you know, it's, it's key. And nice thing about energy medicine for people listening is you can do this in your own home. You know, this, it doesn't, there's the worst thing that happened is nothing. You know, it's, it's not like uh, when you see the drug commercials and you got to listen through <laughs> 20 minutes of uh, things that might happen to your body yeah. because you took this weird drug, this, our body wants those healing. And one way, you know, it is you just start feeling better. But what we did is we're always looking for ways to show them because you, when you take something that's invisible, like frequencies, people don't see it. Like a lot of people go, oh, 5G doesn't do anything because they don't understand it. Right. And it's affecting everyone. But some people are compromised, like 20% of the people, they can't, they actually right. feel it and it, it causes an effect. And there's different people have different levels of energy sensitivity. Yeah, that's what we found. So tell, tell us more about how the, um, the, the light works together with the sounds. Because you have so you have the sounds there. going through your app, and then you also have the lights for the eyes that's there. flashing uh, on the yeah. on the uh, yeah. diodes there. Yeah. Talk so the about. light in the eyes is actually synchronized with the message or with the training. So some of the training, remember, is just like pink noise and light. That's the base level. So the light is mimicking. So whatever the sound is doing in the right ear, we're actually having the left eye do it. Okay. Whatever is happening in the in the uh, left ear, the right eye is doing it. That way, we can get this cross organization of energy and information. Because the more we can build communication between the two hemispheres, we know at least for the brain, all cognitive decline. Every person we've ever done, we've always found their left hemisphere is moving slower than their right. And when I say moving, it's not really moving; it's energy. So you should have about ten point eight volts of energy across your frontal lobe on both sides. Mm -hmm. And what we see with the dementia patient is usually around an eight in the left hemisphere and a 12 in the right, okay. which means there's that gap doesn't allow them to communicate. So what's happening with the light is we're going to, instead of that mismatch happening, we're going to start bringing the brain on. We actually have sessions that the clinics use that speed up the left hemisphere or give more energy to the left hemisphere and slow down the right. Mm -hmm. So we're using different treatment, even across the, the brain, because everything we see with our right eye is working with our left brain. Everything with our left eye is our right brain. So this is all working together. And what, what happens in our life, unfortunately, is most of the time we're always right, one, one, one side dominant. So if we're right-handed, we do everything right-handed. That's where martial arts comes out, Tai Chi, yoga, those kind of things work to integrate these on a physical level. Mm -hmm. What we're doing is we're doing that with light, sound, and vibration. Right. So everything the sound is doing, we're mimicking with light. The ear light is different. The ear light is just pulsing a frequency that's talking to the nervous system. So just like I said, there's when we walk by a 5G tower, the reason some people get sick is it's actually talking to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Although it's not a language that we want to hear. You know, it's like somebody screaming at us at a, at a high pitch, uh, you know, so it's disrupting. But if it was a harmonious frequency, our body would actually invite that energy in. And what I like to tell people, they go, what do you mean by that? I go, we've all been to a party before 
And at that party, we really didn't want to be there. Maybe somebody forced us to go, but we get there and they start playing our favorite songs. Mm -hmm. Well, eventually we start tapping our foot, bobbing our head and they go, Hey, and you're smiling because they're playing all your favorite songs. So your, your body, what happened was though, in every cell, there's something called a chromophore, which is a little battery and it absorbs frequency, light and sound. Mm -hmm. So as it absorbs that energy, it's got to do something with that energy. Once that battery is full, it's going to share that energy with the rest of the system. But once the rest of the once the system is energized, like what I'm talking right now, I don't know if you see it, but all the hair on my hand, all I have to do is talk about energy and I can bring it through my body. Yeah. You just when this energy happens, when you have an abundance of energy, it wants to give it away. So unfortunately, when we're in a stress state, we we hold that tight and we actually block the flow of energy, which which is less resourceful. <laughs> you know, that's why the training with the brain tap with the light is. Let's open the brain up. We're going to stress it out. If somebody's wondering, gosh, I don't know about flashing lights. Well, you don't see the light when your brain's balanced. Mm -hmm. So when your brain's balanced, there's no light anymore because they're offset just enough. Right. It's like um, when you're looking at a movie, you don't see those black lines between the frames because 30 frames per second, your brain just edits it out. Mm -hmm. The same, the, your brain is editing out that space and it's right. making a place for you to visualize into. So the light is working to... Uh, the key to the light is 30% of your hearing is actually controlled by your vision. So you heard me there. So what happens is if you close your eye, if I had you hooked up to an EEG without anything, yeah. and I just said, close your eyes, we're going to see half your energy in your brain shut down because it's going to tell you, your brain's going to go, oh, it's time to go into sleep mode. But if we, if we introduce light through the optic nerve, which is cranial nerve two, then what happens is the brain has to stay awake because it thinks, what is that over there? What's that over there? What's that over there? What's that over there? And so pretty soon it just says, okay, I'm just going to stay awake. Since the brain truly never sleeps anyway, it's just a matter of energy. It's, it, it only weighs, you know, whatever they say, two to 3% of the body's weight, but it uses 25% of the body's ATP. Mm -hmm. which means energy. So yeah. if you can think about a gas guzzler car, your brain is a gas guzzling or an energy driven system. Mm -hmm. And so what the light's doing also is providing it energy, right. uh, frequency, light and sound. That's all energy. Mm -hmm. But light is an energy source that most people are under under they're underutilizing, right? So they we're designed to be outside. If it's sunny, if it's nice out, we should be out, but mm -hmm. that's not the way our world is anymore. We, we right. live in houses, we drive in cars, we, we don't get outside. So we need to have stimulus with light and right. the red and blue light is just the safest light that we can use. Mm -hmm. So this is basically supplementing all the light, sound and frequency that our body is missing, especially in today's lifestyle and stressful environments and work environments and so on. And recently what I've been doing is actually combining the brain tap together with the cheek coils. Um, yeah. And all you need to do is just to use a splitter, just split up the signal. So just one of them goes to the cheek coil. You just connect one to the cheek coil, right? And you just plug it in and then you can plug in another wire uh, into, the, into the brain tap uh, audio input. And you can actually use them together. You can use either the cheek coil app or you can use the brain tap app. It just works together um, with both devices at the same time. So it's called tech stacking. And, and now you can experience the uh, electromagnetic field, the chi energy, and also all the lights and sound and brain tra entrainment that uh, Dr. Porter just talked about. What do you think about the tech stacking uh, and how, how that's going to help? No, that's awesome. I think it's really good. And, and I, we were just talking a little earlier about actually having a sound bed or a sound vibrational system like in harmony i mean mm -hmm. we use them all here if they you came to my clinic i have three stations like that here and we're gonna you know the now that i have the cheek oil it's going to be down there too so when when doctors come to the clinic we take them through we have 16 different stations that people work and of course if they're just laying there they could do the cheek coil on a lot of different things but we have we have uh, the sound tables we have uh, the red light therapy beds things like that all of those things whatever you can stack at the same time, because people have, they don't have a lot of time. And right. the nice thing about this is it's something you, you could even do. Um, we have people listening to our gamma series while they're doing their emails. And okay. one guy sent me his brain scan after he did that for a month. And it was incredible because it gamma will keep you getting peaked. So he, he was putting it on so he could do his, 
because he was falling asleep when he was doing his work. He didn't have enough energy. And I said, well, you can't do the lights, obviously, because you can't look at your screen, but you could be using the ear lights with the energy, bringing energy in with that frequency. Mm -hmm. And they could be wearing the cheek oil at the same time. So right. there's a lot of different uses for it. Right. So I see in your app, you have uh, programs for sleep and focus. Can you tell us more specifically how the brain tap helps for those two things? Right. Well, the main thing with sleep is when we're, most people, unfortunately, are running around all day long in a high level of delta. Delta is the brainwave of sleep, but they're, they're in the, their primary brainwave is delta while they're awake, which means this is like, and some of the listeners might understand this, it's like you ran all day with a parachute behind you, and then mm -hmm. at night you sat down on the couch to watch a little TV or talk with your family, and all of a sudden you're passed out. And they go, hey, man, they, they, they just pass out as soon as they stop. Because some people can go, 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 go. And as soon as they stop, that's their brain is not regulating mm -hmm. and too much delta. So what, what's happening with the sleep cycle is we need to train the brain in the morning to wake up. So we, we always encourage people to do the AM programs in the morning. We call it digital coffee. Because if you didn't get good night's sleep, your brain's going to be dysregulated, meaning that there's not going to be matched. That 10, 10, 8, 10, 8, it should be matched across the hemispheres. And what we find is that doesn't happen. It could happen because of poor diet, uh, stress in their lifestyle, an injury, you know, whatever caused it, it's caused it. And then what we find is that as they do the sleep program, we're going to teach them some techniques. And those are verbal techniques or cues. And the verbal words that we use are important because words can control 2,300 gene expressions. Mm -hmm. So with people like Dr. Bruce Lipton, who talks about in biology of belief about how epigenetics work, we need to change our thinking. They say that we speak to ourselves 80,000 words a day, 60,000 are negative. Well, mm -hmm if you got to work on those, so you can change that. And they're, they're not negative to be negative. They're negative because our subconscious is protecting us. It's always, remember, it's looking around our environment. Is this safe? Is this, and these bodies have not really evolved over 200,000 years like our brain has. You know, right. our brain or our consciousness may be a better way to say it, but it's still looking to protect us. Mm -hmm. It's not negative in, in the sense of negative, but it's negative in the sense that it causes our body to shut down. So in the, in, during the sleep program, we're gonna teach them to go from beta <clears throat> to re-engage during the day and then teach them to go into delta at night. And then in the morning, wake up and have the pre predominant brainwave while you're awake should be beta. 45% of your brain should be in beta and 30% should be alpha. But I would say that that's very rarely happened in the history of time, even with gurus that we've measured in India. Mm -hmm. the, um, it's very hard to do this on your own because the brain kind of just regulates itself. Some people just naturally have high focus and high attention to detail. So during the sleep cycle, we need to teach people to go to sleep again. Mm -hmm. And one of the keys to sleeping is not trying to sleep. You know, when some people get in bed, they're trying to sleep, they're tossing and turning, trying to do the thing. The reality is that you should take, there's always a system to everything. So what, what we need to do as adults or what we found has worked the best in our sleep studies is teaching them to go to sleep with brain tap, but teaching them some breathing techniques along the way to release the stress and tension in the body. Our body collects energy all day long. And mm -hmm. if we're not getting out and getting grounded, then that energy can interfere with our sleep as well. So mm -hmm. we teach people to sleep. The nice thing about the sleep protocol is once you learn how to sleep, and as long as you do at least a brain tap every 72 hours, your sleep is going to continue to improve. Right. Because it's a factor of getting rid of the excess energy. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when we talk about um, using it for stress, when the body builds up this kinetic energy, you know, all day long, you know, there are people that go to sleep, they're gnashing their teeth, they wake up, they're still gnashing their teeth, they didn't get much sleep. You know, if, if we really do a sleep study with them, they were in bed for eight hours, but they didn't sleep. Right. The key is to get that deep level four sleep, where our brain and body cleanses, because that's a time for our brain to cleanse. So mm -hmm. the key thing is the light is going to teach every session is different. We have about, I think about uh, over 100 sessions just to teach people how to sleep. Right. So that means you could do a hundred different sessions in a hundred days and then go back through them again, because by the time you got through them, you could go through them again. Your brain wouldn't remember them. And each time it's a little different. So that that's key. And the stress one is important because unless we find ways throughout the day to de-stress, that stress just keeps building up, building up, building up. 
And then we implode or explode on a family member or friend or a loved one who's going to take us back. So we have to have creative ways to release those stress and tension. And that's the main thing BrainTap does. If people can do it at first, the 21 days, we actually put together a jumpstart 21 day program when they get in. That's what I recommend because it gives you a good variety of them for the first 21 days. Then after that, just kind of pick and choose what you want to listen to. You can use the search feature. There's 1,800 sessions. So Mm -hmm. you have a lot of variety there. That's wonderful. Yeah, so I think this is uh, so amazing because you can like uh, transform every aspect of your life. Um, right now, the most um, problems that people have that we get uh, through our company is the sleep, is the focus and clarity, and also uh, help with meditation. So your app and your, your system is perfect for programming the brain to do all those things by itself, right? Uh, without having to you know, take a course and having to learn it. Uh, your your program has all the instructions already built in, and while, and it, and it's playing you the instructions while you're actually getting the therapy itself. And as you're stacking all these different technologies together, you're saving so much time. You can only you only need to use this ten minutes or up to thirty minutes a day, and then you're transforming yourself one percent a day, which is one of our models in our company. Yeah, exactly. If you can do something every day to improve your health and vitality, at the end of the year, you will become a totally different person. So Mm -hmm. that 1% is a great strategy. And there's also a saying that we use that's there is no there, which means you're never finished. I mean, unless you live on a desert island where they bring you, you know, coconut cream pies and, you know, serve you dinner and give you massages every day and you don't have to worry about anything, you know, that's that's not reality. That's fantasy island. You know, so we have to do something every day to de-stress or to maintenance our mind or someone else will. You know, in stress and fear are the two, two uh, um, very important things to learn to uh, transform. Because mm-hmm. right now our environment is such that it stresses predominantly everywhere. Fear is everywhere. Yeah. But we don't have to let that control or dictate who we are. Right. We can use these technologies, like we're talking about the the chi coil and the brain tap, to focus and energize and basically inoculate ourselves against this yeah. the ravages of stress. Right, and, and and we can't avoid it. I think I think the the media is programmed to stress you out. You know, they're they're oh, yes. they they're programmed to stress you out. They're programmed to keep you in a in a stressful state and an anxiety and then fear. So, um, and it's so difficult, even with just regular meditation to, to, to de-stress. So um, that's why I believe that with technology combined with meditation, now it helps, gives you the tools that you need to, you know, fight that or to counteract that. Well, obviously you can just stop watching the news or stop watching TV too. Yeah. Right. You want to start eliminating all the stressors you don't need, but there's you. We need to be a, aware of what's happening. I mean, I, I'm I've been accused many times of not knowing what's happening in the world because, really, I could care less. Most of the time, it's meaningless mm-hmm. to me, and all they're doing is playing with people's brains and getting them to think weird and bizarre thoughts. You know, the the reality is that we are infinite beings. We are energy beings with a potential that is unlimited, mm-hmm. but people will watch the news and believe all this limitation. There is more good happening in your hometown right now that that could fill up a 24-hour news station, but they don't want to show it to us. So it's up to us to focus on those positive things, bring joy back to our personal life and to our families' lives, and and start changing our communities by realizing that we don't have to be we don't have to be manipulated and controlled because if you want to control somebody, and you know this because you've done some martial arts as well and things, is all I have to do is make you angry Mm -hmm. or upset, and I win. You know, the the minute you lose control, you lose autonomy. There's a saying, the law of the lie, even though something's been proven to be false, some people will still believe it to be true. Mm -hmm. And when we think about energy medicine, you know, they'll believe that craziness, but you tell them, hey, put this cheek oil on, (laughs) it's going to increase your energy. And they go, oh, no, that's mumbo jumbo. But we can measure it now. The nice thing is that we can take science-based measurements and prove to people these things are happening. Yeah. When I was at the National Institute of Health here in, in, in America just a few weeks ago in, in Arizona, I had the head of, this was the integrative health division. It wasn't the pills and potions division. So they were looking for alternative medicine. And so we were presenting papers on our sleep study and we were presenting papers on our golf program where we helped the golfers become national champions three years in a row. We were talking about mindset and staying positive. And she, she said to me, she goes, this is incredible. 
why does anybody know about this? I go, well, I've been doing it since the 80s. You know, it seems like somebody would know about it. Now, since 2014, we've had the brain tap. Mm -hmm. And since uh, five years ago, we've had the one we have now. This is the sixth generation that we have, but mm -hmm. and we're always improving it. But but I think now that people like the National Institute of Health are aware of it, and we actually have um, three big things happening out there in the world that I think people need to know about. One is we have an insurance company in California that's actually approved brain tap for personal injury cases, which wow. means if your lawyer or doctor says that you need it, then they'll actually put it into the program and pay for it for right. a year, which mm -hmm. is pretty cool. They have 15,000 clinics that they're working through. And we have a, an insurance company in Florida that now this insurance company actually has a whole part of it that has to do with wellness. So like, uh, let's say we introduce them to the chi coil or the, they have the brain tap. Every time they do those things, as long as we can report them being done, the insurance company gives them credits, like positive health credits. So mm -hmm. we know... If they're using the cheek coil and brain tap, they're going to have less illness. They're going to have less stress. Yeah. They're going to basically be healthier. And so does the insurance companies. Now, right. we took it a step further in Brazil because the Brazilian government actually paid a quarter million dollars to test brain tap. Mm -hmm. And we showed that we could upregulate 54 different neurotransmitters and downregulate stress hormones. Mm -hmm. And that, that proved out in three studies. Usually the way drug companies do it is they'll do three studies. One hopefully will work. Sometimes yeah. they don't. So they have to do another study until they get one that works. And they right. don't tell anybody about the other studies. <laughs> well, with our studies, all three of them worked. Wow. Brain tap was significant mm -hmm. in changing the ways people's brains operated as far as their neurotransmitter activity. And they were doing this for pain. Because mm -hmm. most people don't realize pain is a, is a function of information in the body. It's not just, so, I mean, obviously, if you get a cut, your, your brain needs to know that's happening. But a lot of times there's nothing physiologically wrong with them, mm -hmm. but the body is still communicating a pain message to the brain. Right. Like phantom pain. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Like phantom pain. This is like, yes, in, like in phantom mind. pain. We've worked with it, but uh, what, yeah, what happens with like, we did it with fibromyalgia because a lot of doctors unfortunately think it's phantom pain, mm -hmm. but we now know what it is. It's, it's uh, crystallization in the myelin sheath. Uh, where the nerves come together, it's almost like having sandpaper and you're, it's rubbing against it. So mm -hmm. you need those frequencies like, like you have and what we have to help break those down when you get into those harmonic. Harmonics are really powerful. And most people have seen the commercials where the person's singing and they break a glass. Yeah. Well, that's really how these frequencies work. You know, you have this crystallization in the body, you send the right frequency in the body, it just blows it apart. Now the body can metabolize, digest, and eliminate that crystallization and put the body back into homeostasis. Mm -hmm. So it, the innate intelligence of every cell knows what to do. It's just, we got to present the right information so right. it can do that. Right. Yeah. All our cells and our DNA are programmed to be healthy and programmed to be very powerful and, and strong and, and resilient. It's just that our, our environments and what we've absorbed have, um, have suppressed it. And then what this technology, what your technology is doing is, is just opening up and bringing it back to what's normal and what's supposed to be. I wanted to share one thing with your group too, because they might want to use this for sports. And we have a lot of athletes, if they do hashtag brain tap online, they'll see a lot of different professional athletes. But one that really impressed me was we have a, an MMA fighter, Corey Anderson, and he was on uh, the sports program ESPN after his fight. And they said, Corey, how did you know you're going to win? He said, well, I was in my room. I was in the locker room doing my brain tap session before <laughs> I came out here. And I visualized myself knocking him out at 42 seconds. Well, he knocked him out at 42 seconds. Wow. So in the, in the process, so when we can visualize in the right physiological state, we actually set up an environment or a frequency response that causes that to happen because there's mm -hmm. an infinite number of possibilities. And usually right. it's what we think about most that we bring about most. Yeah. So, you know, if we're thinking something positive is going to happen, positive things happen. If we're thinking right. about something negative happening, then negative things happen. And not that they're, they're probably both available to us. It's just whatever we're focusing on. Right. right. Yes. Yes. When you activate that part of your consciousness, it's like you're creating ripples in time and space to influence the reality itself. Right? Because consciousness, everything, uh, you know, according to a lot of uh, philosophy here, is that nothing's real. It's all just illusion, right? It's just all frequency. Everything that we're experiencing is just a frequency. 
and with now with multiple dimensions coming into play with what scientists are discovering is that we can actually um, maybe like make another reality become your reality using your mind. Right. And that's what one, you just explained. One of, the, one of the things that neuroscience knows now that this is a new thing that blew my mind just a few weeks ago. I was reading about it. It says our eyes take in 2000 pieces of information. We consciously only act on about 40 of them, but our brain gets over 10 million messages a second from our eyes. So we're making it all up is what they're saying. You know, so, so <laughs> what are we, you know, what are these 10 million messages? So they now know we render our reality, which means we, we basically, they say that we, because the world is moving, everything's moving so fast. Mm -hmm. Our brain basically starts to anticipate and we're all kind of prejudiced about everything because we we kind of predict like we walk into a room, maybe we're looking for a salt shaker and we, we yell out to the table, where's the salt shaker? It's right there on the counter. It's not here. And then they walk out and there's the salt shaker. It's because that person walking out there had to believe they didn't know where it was. Mm -hmm. So the brain didn't render it. Yeah. Even though it was right there. So right. what else isn't, what I always tell people is what else isn't there? There's a unique story that uh, one of my mentors, Jack Canfield, talks about with a friend of mine, Bob Harris. They went to Florida to interview a woman, and she was an older woman, and she she was in the news because her grandson was working in his car out front, and the car fell on him. She what? picked up the car. He crawled out. She saved his life. Wow. She was she was over eighty years old, and she what? didn't come out of her house for weeks. So Jack Canfield and Bob Harris went down there and said, "Hey, you know, finally got in to see her and said, hey, what's going on?'" She goes, "I'm embarrassed." They said, what do you mean you're embarrassed? You picked up the car. You, you saved the life of your grandson. She goes, I know. And I'm 80 years old and I wasted my life. What could I have done with my life right. with all this potential? You understand? So we all have that potential to lift that car. We all have that potential to do all these great things. But a lot of people just, before they even start it, they say no. Like they go, oh, that brain tap won't work for me. Oh, that cheek coil won't work for me. They they cancel it before they even try it. Yeah. And the, the, the reality is that if we expect to get results, we tend to get better results. Right. But, you know, one of the nice things I like about both of our technologies, it doesn't depend what you think. It really doesn't matter yeah. because the yeah. cells of our body respond to frequencies, mm -hmm. you know, and that's a whole nother language. It's a different language than our conscious mind and what we're thinking. It's the language of cell, the cellular communication and what's going on. And as we build those communities of cells as healthy, vibrant, dynamic cells, mm -hmm. they basically set up the system to heal us, whether we want it or not, you right. know, because it, it, they can override those because of the emotional state. Right. Yeah, speaking speaking of getting feedback from um, whether the device is working, a lot of people can feel it right away, but there's some people that don't actually feel it right away. So what we're actually creating now is just a very simple HRV uh, meter, and people can just use the meter and then measure themselves, get a snapshot of a snapshot of their heart rate variability, and then use the, the your system or my system together um, for 15 minutes, and then do another snapshot. So what do you think about the HRV uh, and how, how that can be a good um, indicator of, of uh, the effectiveness? No, it's perfect. I think it's great. We're actually going to be coming out here, hopefully within the next six weeks, we'll have an app that can do it with, um, we have a little a sensor that's like $99 and you can use that sensor to do your own readings and have, you can figure out all your nervous system parameters because there's more than, heart rate variability is a really good one. Uh, and if you get that number, you'll see that number improve. Most people will improve their HRV by three to five points just by doing that 10 minute brain tap session. And that's pretty meaningful for HRV. It's kind of mm -hmm. hard to move those, yeah. those numbers. That's amazing. All right. Well, we just had uh, Dr. Patrick Porter. He's a neuroscientist, PhD, and he's the inventor of brain tap. Thanks so much for sharing all your amazing wisdom, wisdom and knowledge with us and thank you so much for inventing brain tap this has changed my life and uh, has changed thousands of lives and now uh, we're going to um, share it with our group and i'm sure that they're going to love it and and love it especially when they use it together with the cheek coils so thank you so much for your time yeah well thank you for having me and, and helping us reach our goal of reaching a billion brains because we need yeah. to in those listening we hope yours is one of those brains we're going to be helping amazing all right have a good day Use the chi and prosper.